Like so many, Olivia Newton-John is a childhood idol of mine, and I got to spend a few days at the Olivia Newton-John Cancer Wellness and Research Center in her hometown of Melbourne, Australia. And I'm happy to report Olivia is looking and feeling great. She turns 69 next week, hard to believe. She's back on tour and back in the recording studio. She's even working on a new book about her life. That's because Olivia refuses to let anything, not even cancer, slow her down. How personal is this place to you? Oh, extremely. For Livy Newton-John, the Cancer Wellness and Research Center that bears her name is more important than ever. For the past 15 years, Olivia has made this her life's work, but it's taking on new meaning with news of the reoccurrence of her own breast cancer in May. Olivia, you look amazing. You are radiant. How are you feeling? I feel really good, thank you. I really do. I'm doing well. Just four months ago, she got the shocking news that after 25 years in remission, her breast cancer had returned, this time metastasizing to her lower back. What was it that was your first indication? I thought I had sciatica. Again, it was painful to walk. So I thought it was that. And you were still performing. I was still performing, yep. I would kind of grit my teeth and take a couple of aspirin and go on. <laughs> when the doctor said the cancer is back and it had metastasized, I mean, what is what went through your mind in that moment? You know, I guess it was a little surprising. I never would have associated it because in my mind it was over. I, I'd finished with it. And what is the prognosis when you do have metastatic breast cancer? I don't read into um, prognosis and statistics because I think that can really be depressing and mm -hmm. I'm not going to be one of those statistics. I'm going to be fine and I will probably deal with this in my life as an ongoing thing. I think that you can live with cancer like you can live with other things uh, if you take care of yourself. After a course of photon radiation combined with natural remedies, including herbal supplements and meditation, she's on what she calls her journey to wellness, answered prayers for her husband of nine years, John Easterling and daughter Chloe, her constant sources of support. Well, my husband was there with me and has been my rock. He's just an incredible person. He's totally confident that I'm fine and I'm going to last a long time. When she was treated the first time, Newton John felt the need for more than just traditional medical treatment. On her own, she supplemented chemotherapy with mind and body wellness. She believes it's a winning combination, and now she's sharing it with other patients here at her wellness center offering massage, meditation, yoga, art, and music therapy to patients and their families on the road to recovery. Without that experience, I wouldn't have grown and had the desire or the passion to help other people who are going through it and the compassion to understand what it's like when you're going through cancer. So it's been an amazing journey. And having it happen again, I thought to myself, I've done it before. You know, I got through this before and I can do it again. Are you scared at all? Um, no, I'm a good at denial. <laughs> good. <laughs> it's a good thing to have. No, I'm, I'm not really. I mean, of course you, you have fear. That's only natural. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, my positive outlook is a decision. I'd be lying if I didn't say I have dark moments and negative moments. I'm human. But on a general scale, I tend to see the glass is half full. <laughs> Positivity, even in the most difficult moments. As recently as a month ago, she was in such crippling pain that she had difficulty walking. She credits her use of medical cannabis for getting her back on her feet. What are some of the misconceptions about medicinal marijuana? People have this vision from the 60s of people just sitting around you know, getting stoned. And I think that it's, it's not about that. This plant is a healing plant. I think we need to change the vision of what it is because yeah. it, it helped me greatly and it helps with pain and inflammation. Now she's back to helping others, raising money to keep the wellness center open, funding research for clinical trials and breakthrough cancer treatment, and spending time here, connecting with patients on a whole new level. What has cancer taught you about yourself? I think it taught me I'm stronger than I thought I was because even though you have a team around you and people are helping you, it's really in the end, it's up to you. Believe you can do it and, and to go through it, so um, it made me stronger. You call yourself a cancer thriver. You yes. don't like the word survivor. Yes. Why thriver? The survivor sounds like someone clinging onto a lifeboat to me. A thriver is someone that's already off the boat and on land. Always choosing to see the light, inspiring others to do the same.
And Olivia has something else to celebrate next year. Marks the 40th anniversary of Brie. She still has those famous leather pants. She plans to auction them off, which will then bring things back full circle because that money will then be donated right back to her cancer and wellness center, guys. Oh, it's so good to see her mm -hmm. doing so well. She's an inspiration. Yes, yeah. she is. Thank you Thanks, so Nat. much. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.